Hey guys, it's Christopher, and in this FreeCAD tutorial, I'm going to show you how to generate toolpaths for facing and drilling operations in the PATH workbench. Before I begin, I'm just going to show you my tool list. I have a quarter inch carbide end mill that I'll be using for facing, then a center drill for locating, and a 3 16th and a half inch drill for my drills, um, which will drill these holes. Um, these holes are 3 16 these are half inch, and the 3 16 holes are through holes, and these are half inch deep. The depth is measured from the top of my part to the um, the bottom of the full diameter, not to the drill point, which is important later. So half inch depth on the half inch diameter and through on the 3 16 The block size is just one inch thick by two inches wide and three inches long, but that's less important since mostly we'll be working on the face here. Anyway, to get started, I will create my job. I only have one body and I don't have a template. For my setup, I'll use a create box and add 1 8 of an inch to the top of my stock. The reason for that is so that I can face it off in an operation. And I already have the origin where I want it, so I can move on to the tools. I will go ahead and add all four of the tools that I'll be using and remove the default, which I won't need, and enter all the data in for my feeds and speeds. Okay, with these values entered, I can finish the job. And now we are ready to start doing operations. Before I do anything else, I'm gonna face it. That's this operation right here. I'll be using tool one, my end mill. Ideally, you would normally use a face mill for that, um, but you can use, it, um, use a smaller end mill too. But it shows um, the path that it takes on the facing operation, and I think it, um, it's easier to see with a smaller end mill what it's trying to do. So that's why I chose that. The face geometry, I'm going to select um, the top of my part, add that to my geometry, and go to the depths. So I'm going to start um, actually 0.225 above my part. That's because there's 0.125 on top as stock, and I want to leave 100 thousandths um, there clearance. The final depth is going to be 0. Um, because zero is the top of my part, and the finish depth is going to be 10,000. So that would be the last pass that it takes is going to be 10,000. Finishing pass. And the step down, I'll leave it a quarter inch. It can take the whole thing as a roughing pass. So then take 10,000 for finishing. Heights, they're both above the top of my stock. That's okay. And operation, there's a couple um, options here. Most of the time, these will go as default. One thing I really normally change would be the pattern style. If I apply right now, you can see the, the way that it does this facing. But I prefer the zigzag offset. That's the same as the zigzag, except it goes around the perimeter too. I think it covers the area nicely and efficiently. There's all kinds of ones that you can try um, for different styles. But I normally use the zigzag offset. And the other um, settings I will keep constant. So finish that. And now we are ready to move on to drilling. This is the drilling operation. We're actually going to do this three times because we have to locate all the holes and then drill all of this one diameter and then all of the next diameter. So um, drill two, the center drill. If we go to base geometry, um, we don't want to do this feature, um, so we're going to have to go in and select all of these holes. Make sure we click Control as we're selecting, and add these to our geometry list. Put 
there's everything. Um, and we can next go to the, um, you could use a base location actually. So we, if you didn't have the holes here, you could actually just type out the X and Y coordinate for each one, but we have them in our part. The depths, um, for all of these, I'm going to start, actually I'm gonna leave it at an eighth of an, eighth of an inch above the part, but then end it negative an eighth of an inch. Sometimes you have to add units here or else it'll default to metric for some reason. And that should face, or not face, it should drill an eighth of an inch into our part for the uh, for the locations. These are both above my part, so I'll leave them. And we won't worry about a peck or a dwell for this. And the tip length is not important yet. Um, it's just center drilling but those will come into play later. So I'll apply, hit OK, and you can see that it is drilling down below the surface. Actually, at this point, I'm going to animate it, show you what it looks like. Now, the reason why uh, it's gonna leave some corners when it's facing, the reason for that is because it thinks that it doesn't want to cross the line. So far, I haven't really um, seen um, any problems that it's causing you could just, after you're finished, you could just uh, file these off. But if you're doing high production, you would want to find a better solution for that to get rid of these corners. Anyway, it looks like it's center drilled everything properly. The depths look fine. So we can go ahead and use our drill bits to drill all of these. We can delete that model there and go on to our next drilling operation which is going to be the 3 16th inch drill. Base geometry, it actually still has it all selected for us. And it has the diameters and metric. I don't know why. It seems like a lot of the things on the path workbench, it defaults to metric, even if you tell it to default to American. So I'm just going to uncheck all of these 12.7. This is the equivalent of a half inch hole. So I'm just going to uncheck those. Go to the depths. Um, start depth looks okay, and the final depth, I'm going to discard this and make it negative 1.1. The reason is because the block is one inch deep, and I actually want it to drill all the way through and stick out a hundred thousandths, just to make sure it breaks through the bottom of my part. Heights, both above the top of my part, I'll leave that in the operation. Um, this time, we will be using a peck. What the peck means is that um, when it goes into your part, it will drill the peck length, which actually I'm going to set this to 1875. Normally you use the same peck length as the diameter of your drill. So we have our drill, it'll come down 0.1875, come back up, and then go down to the place where it left off and go down another 0.1875, come back up and then go down another 1.875, or sorry, 0.1875. It'll, it'll um, keep coming down and up until it's all the way through your part. The reason is that, the reason for that is mostly for chip clearance so that it can clear the chips out of the way before it starts to drill again. Anyway, that's the purpose of peck drilling. I'm gonna keep the peck length the same as the diameter, and these are not um, coming into play yet. So I will apply and accept. Now we should have these holes drilled. And the last operation, actually if we open this up here we can see we have three so far. The, the fourth and the last operation is going to be done with our half inch drill. Now most of this is going to be the same. Actually I did not keep the base geometry this time but we can select all of these half inch holes. Oops. Okay, and add those. And I'm actually going to take off the face that it has here. So we just have these four holes. Depths, I'm going to discard this and make the 
depth negative 0 0.5 because that's the depth of our half inch holes. Heights are okay. And now we're going to get into um, the dwell and the tip length. We won't be pecking on this because actually since the diameter is equal to the um, to the depth, it would only be one peck anyway, so it doesn't matter. We are going to dwell. Um, what this means is when it gets to the bottom of the hole, it's going to just sit there and wait while the drill is spinning. The reason for this is because if it's spinning and it comes down and hits the bottom of the hole and instantly starts to come back up, the hole won't actually be flat um, because it needs to go at least one full rotation at the bottom in order for it to clear that path. Actually, I like to go one and a half rotations just to make sure. And you don't want to go more than that because if it's just down there spinning, then you'll rub, the cutting edge will rub at the bottom of your, um, the bottom of the hole and sometimes it can create a surface finish that, that's worse. So I like to go down and dwell for one and a half rotations and then come back up. To calculate the time for that, um, you need the RPM. We are starting at 600 RPM for this drill, which is the same thing as 10 rotations per second. If you take the reciprocal of that, it would be 0 0.1 seconds per rotation, which means in one rotation, that will take 0.1 seconds. And if we want to go 1.5 rotations, we would multiply that by 1.5. So 0 0.1 times 1.5 equals 0 0.15. And that would be in seconds. So we're going to drill down half an inch and then wait 0 0.15 seconds, just enough time for it to spin one and a half times and then come back up. It's a little bit complicated and the animation actually won't really show it, but that is how the dwell works. And we're going to also use the tip length. The reason for that is because if we, if we did not use a tip length, then the tip of the drill would go down half of an inch. But we want the tip to go down farther so that the, full, uh, the first full diameter goes down half of an inch, and that's what the tip length is used for. It's, it's a compensation for that. Anyway, there's a lot of information there, but I'm going to apply and hit OK. You can see that the toolpath comes all the way down to the tip where we want it. So the tip of the drill goes to the tip of the hole. Anyway, that should be all of our operations. If I go ahead and simulate this, I'm actually going to turn down the accuracy. Um, it just goes faster like this. It doesn't bog down the computer as much. I will run. And it looks like it finished. And you can tell, actually, if I hit OK and hide our original body, it's pretty pixely, but you can tell that it is leaving room for the drill point. These are going all the way through, and our face looks pretty good, except these corners, which I'm not really sure how to get rid of on the toolpath. Anyway, I think that turned out well. Um, we also, if you notice in the, in the simulation, I did take 10,000 finish pass on the face, which is good. Um, so everything looks fine. Actually, you can, I'll delete this, you can inspect the G-code um, itself. I'm going to choose the operation. There we go. And you can see everything that it's doing. Um, first here, it's going to do all the facing. Uh, if I scroll down until I see a G80, um, uh, G81 right here. What that means is a uh, spot drilling cycle. So that's going to go down and um, do all of the center drills. And if you scroll down a little bit more, it cancels that cycle, some rapids, and then a G83. This is where it has the peck drill. This Q value is the peck amount, the peck length that we set. And um, 
it's in metric. Actually, all of this is in metric. I don't know why it always goes back to metric. But um, that's the pec length. And then the x, the x and y here are the position of the hole. Scroll down more. The G80 cancels that cycle, and we get a bunch of G82s. G82 is going to be a dwell. Um, the p-value is the dwell value. So this is a drilling cycle with a dwell. So if you wanted to go back and manually edit this code, you actually could um, after you export it. But the p's are the dwells. The q's are the peck lengths. Um, and there's a lot of other letters uh, that mean different things in the g-code. But those are the main ones for drilling. So I think it looks good. Um, put my shape back on here. And that is a lot about facing and drilling on a CNC. Anyway, I hope this video was useful. If it was, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.